Oh my god, welcome to this Virgo full moon. I am just loving this energy and I am just getting so many beautiful messages here for you today for this Virgo full moon. Okay, so let's just get to the basics really quick. My name is Tawny Michelle, just in case you're new here and you've never seen me before. I do a bunch of cool spiritual shit on this channel, astrology, and a lot of other cool stuff. And make sure to subscribe before you leave if you would like to see more videos from me. In this video, we talk about the Virgo full moon moon. In the beginning of this video, I talk about the full moon, what it means, what it's bringing for all of us, no matter what sign you are. And then at the end of the video, I briefly go over where in your life you could see this happening based on your rising sign. So it's important that you watch the first part of this video so you know what's happening. And the last part of this video is like where it's happening for you, basically. So make sure to watch the first part because I have a lot of really beautiful channel messages here for you today for this full moon. All right, you guys, so this Virgo full moon, right? This full moon is happening in the sign of Virgo opposite the sun in Pisces. So two weeks ago on March 1st or 2nd, we had the Pisces full moon, right? So the last couple weeks have really been about going with the flow, letting things go, integrating, releasing, uh, surrendering, you know, dealing with our emotions and our emotional worlds, dealing with the mysterious the unseen and tapping into the spiritual realms really like releasing and going with the flow and just trusting and having faith and even when things don't make sense you know right now things are not about making logical or practical sense of things or at least they haven't been the last couple weeks it's just been about like throwing yourself into the mystery throwing yourself into the unknown and just really trusting that it's all gonna work out and if you're really tapped in if you really have been building up that spiritual connection and that internal connection to yourself then you've been likely to get into a flow state but if you haven't been if you you've been feeling overwhelmed or like the waves just keep hitting you and knocking you down one thing after another, then likely it's because you haven't quite all the way surrendered yet and you're not quite having faith. And I know that can be easier said than done, especially when you're going through a lot of really heavy or, you know, dark or dense stuff. But at the end of the day, when we can really truly surrender, when we can really truly accept the things that we have no control over because fighting them and obsessing about them and resisting them is just pouring more energy into the situation and it's just making us more miserable. It's making us more stressed out. And so we have to like let the fuck go, you know, like there's some shit that we just have no control over. And once we can accept that, we actually regain our power, right? We actually merge with it and accept accept it and are like, you know, to some level okay with it. It doesn't mean that we have to necessarily like it or that we're like a huge fan of it now or anything. It's just like, there are some things in life that we have to let go of, we have to release. And that is what Pisces season is all about. That's what it's been about the last few weeks. So now that we have this Virgo full moon, it's like this peak culmination moment, this mirroring moment where it's like, we need to integrate the opposite. So if you've just been letting it all hang out, just letting it all go, like almost like a vacation energy where, you know, even if you haven't necessarily been on vacation or even if you've been super overwhelmed and it hasn't necessarily felt like vacation it's been kind of like just putting things off and going with the flow and only really doing what you really feel called or what feels intuitively right or what feels internally aligned at the moment uh, because really like Pisces season really kind of pushes us into that it's like if we're not feeling it or it just feels too like too much like it's just it's been kind of like going the easier softer way and just going with the flow like letting the waves carry you and not swimming against the grain right and so this Virgo full moon's like okay you've been out on the float you've been out just going with the waves or letting the waves crash over you for a little while now now it's time to like kind of get a little bit back to reality like I know the last couple weeks for me it's been like that I've just been really going inward really tapping into my spiritual connection my divinity the ethereal realms my intuition like I've just been really just going with the flow and what felt right and this Virgo full moon's like okay you got to start like you know filming a video and you got to start getting ready to work on April's horoscopes and and all that and so it's kind of like okay how can we implement all of these things that we've learned or all of these lessons of letting go or tapping in or 
following our intuition or you know uh, dealing with our emotions dealing with the emotional realms dealing with our internal selves and and our ethereal selves like how can we take that and start implementing that in our reality like in the real day-to-day -day stuff that we have to do or the daily task that we have to do how can we like have maintenance basically like this virgo full moon is like maintenance like spiritual maintenance in a lot of ways and also it's really about how do we let go of anything like any old habits or any emotional stuff or any blockages anything that's really keeping us from getting into a flow in our day-to-day -day routines it's like how can we keep that flow in our day-to-day -day routines like get maybe like make a routine out of some kind of spiritual practice would be the perfect way to really integrate this start bringing those dreams and that like ethereal like vast like emotional like spiritual divine energy and start implementing it in the day-to-day -day reality right bringing those dreams those visions that we've had for our future and you know all those things that we've been letting go of and releasing it's like okay how can we make sure that that doesn't happen again right it's kind of like after you go through like a ton of healing and it's like yes you did the internal work but it can sometimes at times be easy to fall right back into that same pattern because that's what you're comfortable with like it's like so you have to actually start changing your habits too you actually have to start changing your behaviors you have to start changing the structure in your actual real life about how you address things how you react to things you know what you do like how you do things like all of those little habits that can sometimes hold us back from like experiencing the full circle of healing it's like that's what's happening here and so yes you may have done a lot of healing or you may still be in the process of doing a lot of healing you may still be in the process of letting a lot of things go and trying to get into a flow and really you don't have to try you just have to stop resisting like whatever you're fucking resisting stop you know just stop like I went through this really, really powerful, powerful fucking experience this past weekend with shame. I had had this like just huge ball in my stomach that felt like rock hard. It felt like a knot and it was huge. And it was like right in my stomach, like right in my sacral or like between my sacral and solar plexus even. And no matter how much I would try to like work with that energy and tap into that energy, I could feel the ickiness of it. Like I could, I could tell it was something like very icky that, you know, I didn't want to feel. And I could tell like sometimes when I would tap into it, it would bring up these feelings of like not feeling good about myself or whatever the case may be. And so eventually though, this past weekend when the sun was conjunct to Neptune, it like started unraveling and unraveling right after I did this live portal, the Cosmic Awakening portal that I posted about on my social medias and on my community page here on YouTube. It was so fucking powerful. Like everybody was so blissed out by the end of it. We manifested, we released, we let go of tons of blockages. We connected to our bodies, our energy, like our higher selves. Like we just did so fucking much in that portal and it was just so powerful and so many people like everybody that stayed was just like on top of the world and I'm still hearing from them like you know even a week later like oh my gosh like so much has changed already just since doing that like my life is so like has shifted so much but anyway so I did that like we all did that together in that portal and the you can still get the portal if you would like it'll be linked down below but basically after I did that that evening I went into this place into that knot in my stomach and it just started unraveling and just all of this like shame and ickiness just really started coming up like all of the times in my life that I was just very ashamed of like just felt gross about like just seriously fucking gross like oh my god I can't believe I did that or I can't believe I allowed that to happen or I can't believe I didn't know that or I can't believe I was associated with that or like whatever the case may be it was just like gross <laughs> it was so gross and like at first I was trying to like do all these things to move it through I was just like oh my gosh and I promise I'm getting to my point here soon because there's a very powerful point to this story I was trying to do everything to move through it to like move it through because I just wanted it out of me like so bad I was just like can this please just 
move out of me like it just it felt like just so gross and then eventually it got painful and it felt like I was giving fucking birth like seriously like I sat up and I was like screaming and crying and moaning and like all this crazy shit and it literally felt like I was giving birth and then I was gonna throw up or pass out and I was freaking out like I was like my adrenaline was pumping it was just like super fucking intense and I was like oh my god like I get it now, like something just, I remember that live portal and what I was talking about in that live portal just before all of this happened, like a couple hours before. And I kept telling, like I kept talking about like embracing things and not resisting things, like no matter how much it sucks, no matter how uncomfortable it gets. And I was like, oh my God, by me trying to get it out of me is me resisting it and not embracing it. And in that moment, I just completely shifted and I was like, I'm just going to embrace this no matter how much it sucks, no matter how gross, uncomfortable, etc. Because really, like, it's my emotions, it's my feelings, so it's a part of me. And the more that I'm trying to get this out of me, the more I'm trying to, like, do the same thing that, like, created it in the first place, right? Like, created this knot. It was, like, all of the feelings and emotions of shame and ickiness and guilt that I hadn't felt for tons and tons of years you know what i mean like all of those times where i would like start to feel that and i would shove it down i would repress it i would not allow myself to feel it i would distract myself all of that and so once i realized that i was resisting it because like i didn't even realize i was resisting it like i thought i was trying to let go but in my mind i guess really i was trying to let it go instead of let go and surrender to it i was trying to like only let go to make it go you know and so once i just fully like embraced it and was like okay like i'm not fighting it it got so much less uncomfortable i didn't feel like i was in pain anymore i wasn't like screaming and crying anymore and i was able to work with it it still took me a little bit it still took me a couple hours to really like feel all of it and like be there for myself through all of it but it ended up being a really beautiful and liberating experience and the reason that i wanted to share that with you is because if any of you are struggling right now or any of you are feeling things that feel icky or you're resisting something in your life or you're resisting a certain feeling in your life like really ask yourself what feeling are you resisting what are you like trying to avoid what feeling are you not wanting to feel because even if it's a situation that's outside of you likely it's actually a feeling it's a feeling that you're trying not to feel because everything every stress that we have is really over a feeling right like you may think like oh i'm stressed out because i don't want to lose my job but no really you're stressed out because you're scared to feel the fear of what it would feel like to not have your job right you're scared to feel that it's not really about you not having your job it's about feeling what you're going to feel if that happens right and so that's really what you're avoiding and so i think this virgo full moon is kind of like hey where do we need to readjust our lives our habits in a way that feels more spiritually aligned intuitively aligned more in sync with who we are more in sync with our vibe our energy at the current moment how can we really ground these things that we've been learning since pisces season started at the end of february how can we rearrange our lives in a certain way to truly feel this energy and so and this is a very transformative full moon as well because the sun will be like just coming out of a conjunction with the asteroid Kali. And Kali deals with our Kundalini energy. Kali is a Hindu goddess that correlates with our Kundalini energy, our life force energy, which is a big fucking deal. (laughs) It is a very big fucking deal. Um, And so a lot of people may be having Kundalini experiences or symptoms of Kundalini awakenings. And I may do like a video or a TikTok or something about that over on my Instagram or my TikTok. Uh, But yeah, it's just like, there's a lot of really really divine spiritual guidance and assistance and energy right now if you can really tap into it if you can really get into that flow and shift your energy and get out of this place of like resisting shit right if you can just stop resisting you float and shit gets so much fucking easier and so this virgo full moon is kind of shining a light on like the details right like it's possibly even giving us some answers or some solutions 
to issues that we've been having or showing us where we may need to rearrange something in our lives on like a practical earthly level so we can be more in the flow right where do we need to like you know where maybe we need to just rearrange our our home you know what i mean get the feng shui going do some spring cleaning you know like the the spring equinox is almost here where do we need to adjust our diet or adjust our our day-to-day task you know do we need to add more meditation into our lives like a, a meditation to our schedule do we need to rearrange our schedule because it's really not fucking aligned with us anymore what do you want to bring in with you into this new year because really the new year is really actually about to start, astrologically speaking. And this like Aries season brings a ton of new energy with it. And so this is really a time where we're kind of like being reborn, right? And so it's like, what do we need to rearrange? What do we need to get out of the way? What lessons do we wanna take with us? What things from the past do we wanna let go? What habits do we wanna take or not take with us? You know, where do we need to work on those habits? Where do we need to start doing and implementing rather than just like, you know, not doing? (laughs) Like, where do we need to start taking action rather than, you know, kind of just being in this avoidance state, right? It's like we need to start showing up and addressing things, even the small things, instead of avoiding them. And we really need to make sure that not only our spiritual body and our intuitive body, our more ethereal, you know, spiritual self is aligned, but also our physical self and our physical reality is aligned. And so that way, what our desires and our dreams and, you know, what we want, what we want to manifest can also come through, through the physical if both are aligned. And so that is really what this beautiful Virgo full moon energy is about. And on top of the Virgo full moon, though, we do have uh, Venus squaring Uranus this weekend and Mars squaring Uranus next week. And so this is going to be kind of getting innovative and also where do we need to liberate ourselves in terms of people in our lives, environments in our lives, where do we need to shift or change some things around. There could be a lot of like weird or abnormal or unexpected shifts in terms of community, friends, our social lives, groups of people. Um, I would not be surprised if we didn't see some like rebellion energy in the air, some protest energy in the air, some social unrest or social upheaval, you know, and it's just like, I feel like with, I've been really noticing this Taurus North Node and Scorpio South Node, especially with everything that's happening in the world. And it's so easy to get caught up in all the fear and the intensity and all of that. But you can also tap into the groundedness and the beauty of Taurus as well, the simplicity of Taurus. And so it's like, you can really choose right now which world you want to live in. And it doesn't mean that you are neglecting one for the other. It's just like, where do you really want to put your fucking energy? You know what I mean? And because I feel like astrologically speaking and intuitively speaking, a lot of the things that are happening in the world really are unnecessary and don't need to be fucking happening. And World War III, I think, is not really going to be what a lot of people think it is right now if it happens. Like, if it happens, it's going to be very different. It's not going to be uh, just two countries, like two different countries. It's going to be basically the elite versus everybody else. And the decisions that they are making right now are really going to put us, it's kind of like, yeah, let's fuck ourselves and let's fuck the ordinary people so we can hang on to our shit or so we cannot be exposed or so we can like you know get away with our shady corrupted shit right and that's basically what they are doing and honestly like (laughs) by them doing this they are unnecessarily bringing on a lot of the economical shit that i and many other astrologers have been saying is coming uh for a long time now you know i talked about it in my 2022 predictions video which if you haven't seen like go watch that because a lot of what i've already predicted is fucking happening um but yeah it's like we can live in this place of scarcity and get to that through self-sabotage basically which is literally scorpio the archetype of scorpio we can live in a place of fear lack and scarcity because we are 
basically sabotaging ourselves because we don't want to look weak or because we don't want to look a certain way or because we don't want to allow ourselves to be vulnerable or we can become more independent and live in this place of individuality, consistency, simplicity, beauty, like, and that Taurian energy, you know? And so it's kind of like, there's a couple different like realities that we can live in right now and you can really choose which one, you know? But wherever you're focusing your energy, that is the reality that you're gonna start living in. That is the reality that you're gonna start seeing play out. So I just wanted to say that too really quick. And I'd love to know your thoughts down below if you watched all of the first parts so far and just what you think about this Virgo full moon, how you're feeling it, uh, what your rising sign is, what house it's gonna be in for you and all of that. So let's go ahead and look at the chart for all 12 signs and see what is what's up here alrighty virgo let's start with you full moon in your sign so basically this full moon is a time of like getting back to you baby it's gonna spice things up in the department of you who you are like this is gonna be because we've been in your opposite sign season so it can feel a little like uh, you know like <laughs> and your ruling planet is in your opposite sign you know mercury's in pisces and mercury sucks in pisces because it's like farthest from you it's farthest from home it likes to be with you you know and so it's like your your spirit planet is over there like as far as as far as it can get you can see it way over there but it's like still got a long way to go you know and so and you're trying to contact it and you know he's drunk over there in pisces like just doesn't even know what's what's happening you know what i mean he's tripping on lsd and you know a bunch of like a nudist colony is like feeding him fucking psychedelics left and right and, and you're like yo what's the plan mercury and he's like i don't know man this is fucking crazy i can't pinpoint anything and so right now it's like more about feeling instead of like practicality and logic but this full moon is reintroducing you to yourself so if you've been feeling lost for a little bit now if you've been feeling off track if you've been feeling kind of all over the place if you've been feeling like oh my god where am i what am i doing like what is going on with my life who am i what's going on you know it's been so much about other people and other people's emotions and other people's problems and a message that i really want to tell you virgo is that other people's emotions are not your responsibility. I don't know why, I just felt like some of you guys may needed to hear that because Virgo can take on a lot of responsibility that's not its own. And so it can almost feel like at times, like, you know, it's all resting on your shoulders and only you, like, you know, if you don't do it, then who else will, right? It can feel like that for Virgo, like so much and it can get so exhausting. And so this full moon is like, dude, serve you. Stop worrying about others. Stop worrying about other people's feelings. Stop worrying about other people's emotions. Stop taking on other people's messes. Like, get yourself together. Organize yourself. Organize your life. Organize you, you know? Like, rearrange some things. This could be a time where you're, like, really thinking about, like, how to rearrange some things in your life so you can get in a flow easier. And it may be something small. It doesn't have to be this, like, massive fucking change i mean for some people it could but usually with you know virgo energy it's like one small little tweak here and fucking everything's different you know what i mean it's like a brand new fucking thing you know and so this full moon is like yo it's time to get back to you it is time to like embrace who you are like embrace embrace yourself you know this could be a time where it's like you're starting to remember who you are again or you're starting like it could even be like a time of like a new beginning like a really big like peak new beginning where it's like oh like you like realize something or you see yourself in a new way and it really just like like pushes you to start doing things in a different way to like start focusing on you again to get back to your health your body like what you want to do in your life yourself your own priorities your you know certain tasks that you've been putting off or avoiding it's like a time of just really readjusting you and your life you know and so on top of that we also have venus and mars starting to square uranus this weekend and next week uh when i'm filming this and this is happening from your sixth and your ninth house and so there could be some like work stuff that comes up or some stuff that's going on um 
in your day-to-day -day life or in, in a social situation with other people like coworkers or maybe like the company or the business you work for or an organization that you deal with or something like that or just like people that are in your day-to-day -day life in some way or you know people that you connect with like through social media or something like it, there could be some kind of like big shift or a shift in the way that you think or that you believe about your work, your work routines, your health as well. This could also be like your health routine or, you know, something that's been, that you've been really struggling with in terms of your health. And so um, this could be a massive shift that's like, it's kind of like a give or take, you know, like, do I want to change my beliefs or my values and, and the beliefs that I value to change my health? Or do I want to change my health to suit my, you know, beliefs and the things that I value with my beliefs, you know, something like that could happen where there's some kind of like push and pull between your day to day life, your day to day tasks, your schedule, work, coworkers, health routines versus the higher picture or, you know, uh, educational pursuits or, you know, your belief systems, your worldviews. There could also be kind of like a clash of worldviews with, you know, people in your day to day life or coworkers or something like that. So you do want to watch out for that. Um, luckily, though, this is a ending square. It's what we call a third quarter square. So it could be kind of like something that's already happened or that you've already felt on and off. Um, for like the last two years or the last year that is kind of coming full circle, you know? So anyway, so let me know how that goes and how you end up seeing that play out Virgo down below. Uh, let me know down below if you watched this whole thing, if you watched this whole horoscope with uh, commenting hashtag Virgo gang down below and how you're feeling this full moon and all this energy. I love you guys, happy full moon and we are gonna move on to Libra. So for Libra uh, risings, this full moon is happening in your 12th house so this could be really bringing up some things that you've been putting in the background or avoiding that you need to get done like some task or some day-to-day -day stuff some details that you've been putting off or that you haven't quite seen clearly some subconscious details too like some subconscious things that maybe you just have not been like paying attention to. This full moon is kind of shining a light in the dark where you need to rearrange some behavioral habits in order to be more in the flow of your job, your lifestyle, your day-to-day -day stuff, your schedules, you know, like your health. Like this is definitely <clears throat> possibly bringing up some health stuff, some patterns, some habits uh, that need to be tweaked or worked out. You know, like maybe you've just been in this flow uh, with your day-to-day -day routines or your job or your work or whatever. You've just been like, yeah, I'm like just gonna do what feels good. And, whatever and, and this Virgo full moon is coming in and it's like look like we have to start implementing some we have to start rearranging some things right like uh because these we can't let these habits like get the best of us and so I really feel like that's what this full moon is really going to bring up for Libra risings it's going to be really about patterns and habits and rearranging some things in the background or in the subconscious uh, to really like get in a better state on your in your day-to-day -day life and so this could look like implementing you know more uh, more practical things in your day-to-day -day life but in a spiritual way you know what I mean like where can you maybe do like a morning ritual before you go to work where can you maybe do some yoga or uh, you know do some <laughs> like basically integrate your spiritual life with the more like practical earthly like reality kind of stuff that needs to be taken care of like the the earthly task with the spiritual task right like where can you combine the two integrate the two and uh yeah there may be some stuff coming up from the past as well or some self-defeating self-sabotaging patterns maybe some subconscious perfection perfectionism that is coming in or some control issues that you know is that are coming in that you need to like address or take care of subconsciously so Another thing here is that Venus, your ruling planet, and Mars are in Aquarius and going to start squaring Uranus this weekend and next week uh, in your eighth from your fifth. And so this could be something that comes up with money or finances, some kind of like 
something that's likely come up before, something at least similar that's come up before, but now it's kind of like you're you're shifting it for like the final time. It's like some kind of shift, but it could be some kind of unexpected shift because Uranus can add this like unexpected energy where like maybe it's like because it's like interesting because the eighth house is kind of unfortunate events and the fifth house is fortunate events and so it could be like an unfortunate event that somehow ends up being fortunate right and you've kind of had a lot of this over like the last year or so but it could also be like you know maybe if you've been dating someone maybe something shifts with their finances or their money kind of out of nowhere where they have to get like really innovative to figure something out financially uh this could also be like you know if you have a child maybe there's some kind of child support shift or a shift with that you know like maybe there's some kind of surprise with like taxes or you know just something like that or an, a surprise inheritance or something for some people like there's just going to be some kind of unexpected shift here uh and there could also be like a certain level of like feeling a little like unconventional as as well in terms of your love life uh you know your children dating your sexuality like there could be something unconventional or just weird or different kind of coming up uh that needs to be addressed as well because like this energy is just very weird and unconventional and so there could be like i don't know maybe you maybe you're thinking about dating somebody that is just really like out of your your normal comfort zone um or you already are and there's some kind of unconventional thing or it's just like a lot of unconventional energy, like outside the norm, outside the mainstream. So I'd really, really be curious to know, Libra, how you end up seeing this come up in your life and how you're feeling this Virgo full moon as well. Definitely let me know down below. I'd love, love, love to hear your feedback as always. Comment hashtag Libra gang if you watch this whole horoscope. And we are going to move on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, darlings, this full moon is happening in your 11th house of friends, acquaintances, allies, your social life and just where you really see yourself fitting in in the world and what you really want to gain out of your public image and you know just out of asserting yourself in the world your ambitions basically and so this Virgo full moon is here to kind of say okay there may need to be some things that are rearranged and the and within your associations like what do you want to be associated with who do you want to be associated with um, are the people in your life really aligned to you on like a soul level do they really feel like fun do they feel aligned are they really understanding you and and your passions and your love and your hobbies and what brings you joy or you know things like this and so it can really bring up kind of like okay um, what is aligned with me and my heart and what isn't, right? Are these people aligned with me and my heart? But this could also be a time where you find like-minded people through a creative pursuit or through a creative hobby or for a certain interest that you have or a certain like joy that you have where you kind of find other people that are just as like into it as you are and know just as much about it as you do. And so that could also be it too. But either way, it's kind of like a, you're realigning something on the outside to match something on the inside. So it's kind of like, you know, maybe you've been feeling super creative or you've been diving super deep into what brings you pleasure and joy and what feels right in your soul and, uh, you know, things like that. And so this Virgo full moon could be like, okay, what are you gonna do with that? Where are you gonna go from here? And what do you, like, do you wanna show it off? Or do you need to meet other people that are also like this? Do you wanna connect, you know, things like this, like networking and stuff like that could really come up here. So other than that, um, it, it really is kind of showing you like how to implement your dreams into reality for you. Like where to go from here, the connections that you need to make, um, stuff like that. So anyways, but other than that, we have Venus and Mars in your fourth house in Aquarius, squaring Uranus and Taurus in your seventh house. So this could definitely be a time where there is are some weird, unconventional, outside of the mainstream things coming up, either in your family, in your relationship, somewhere, right? Either in your personal life or with your your relationships and it doesn't just have to be romantic or marriage it could just be like significant people in your life right like i don't know maybe you find out that you had like a a distant cousin who was like into some unconventional stuff or something i don't know like i'm trying to like 
figure out how like different ways that this could play out because this, this is just a really weird energy okay so we could start like you could start getting into some kind of like unconventional thing you know like you could start getting like very interested in something unconventional in your personal life or with your family or like um, behind the scenes in some way or this could be a time where you're just you know it, it may be bringing up like a lot of past patterns or past emotion or childhood stuff that needs to be like where there needs to be some kind of breakthrough that's holding you back in terms of your relationships you know it could be bringing up stuff that you know like this this certain energy where maybe you're you're interested in doing something different or something like out of out of the usual or your partner is you know what i mean so uh, but either way, there could be some tension, like just on a basic level between your family, your personal life, you know, your comfort zone, who you are behind closed doors versus who you are out in the world and the people that you associate with and the significant relationships in your life. So let me know down below how you see that playing out. Um, I would really, really love to hear your feedback, Scorpio. Comments, hashtag Scorpio gang down below if you watched your whole horoscope. I would really, really appreciate it. And let me know how you're feeling this full moon and this other energy. And yeah, we are gonna move on to Sagittarius. Sagittarius, this full moon for you is happening in your 10th house sector. So this is a time where you are gonna feel a lot more focused on career. There's gonna be a lot more energy coming up to do with your career, your public image, where you're going in life, um, your path, you know, what you wanna achieve in life, where your goals, you know, like your legacy, what you wanna leave behind, what you wanna build in this world, um, and stuff like that. So this Virgo full moon is really bringing up a focus on that. Whereas you've been more focused the last couple weeks before this on your family, your personal life, what's going on like behind the scenes, what's going on behind closed doors, what's going on at home and, and you know, stuff like that. You've been a little bit more, I would say probably like secluded or feeling a little bit more like, you know, you've just had a lot where you've been focused more on your personal life because that's what's been comfortable or at least that's where the energy has been flowing, right? That's where it's been trying to get you to, to flow. And so you may have been a lot more emotional these last few weeks or just feeling a lot more like, uh, like things are coming up from the past memories and all of this stuff. And so this Virgo full moon is like, okay, like time to start, getting back out into the world, time to start, you know, like rearranging something in our career is our career or the goals that we've had really aligned with who we are on the inside, with what we really want on the inside and where we come from, our roots, like who we really are, you know? And so these are questions you could be asking yourself around this full moon. Like, do you need to rearrange some things in terms of your goals, your career, you know, like, like, you know, your reputation, um, where you're going, your path, authority figures, like what needs to be tweaked here, right? And you could also be seeing new goals coming in at this time where you're seeing your goals and you're seeing this vision for yourself in like a very different manner in a very different way. And you're motivated to really start like bringing that into reality for this Virgo full moon. So where can you bring those internal visions for yourself, those internal dreams, into a reality basically so other than that we also have the venus mars conjunction in your third house squaring uranus this weekend and next week in your sixth house and so this is going to be a time <laughs> where there could be it's like you could be really thinking a lot learning a lot and speaking a lot and dealing with some things going on in your community or your surroundings um, you could be exploring your community a little bit more or feeling a little bit more social but there could be uh, some kind of unexpected stuff coming up with like your day-to-day -day routines, your work, your task, your maintenance, your health, your job, coworkers, things like that, where it's like maybe you're not seeing eye to eye or maybe there's some kind of clash or maybe you're trying to integrate, maybe you're trying to integrate your way of thinking with other people's way of thinking in some way, but there definitely could be some clashing here with like, the way of thinking or how you're communicating or the type of like-minded people that you're around and how that somehow reflects back to your job or your day-to-day -day life or routines and schedules in some way so yeah there could be kind of like a some tension rising here or you could start feeling very much like you want to break free or have some kind of breakthrough in terms of your day-to-day -day life and what you're doing and who you're interacting with or 
who, what, where, why <laughs> you're interacting with. So, uh, but yeah, let me know how that energy is affecting you down below, Sag. I would really, really love to hear your feedback on this. Um, you could also be feeling a little bit more unconventional in your interest and what you're trying to do, your hobbies, you know, your, your talents, your you know, your, the task that you're doing, you could be wanting to do something a little bit more unconventional as well, that could be it. But let me know down below, comment, hashtag Sag Gang down below if you watch this whole horoscope, I would really appreciate it. And let me know how you're feeling this full moon and this other energy as well over the next week, I'd really love to know. So moving on to Capricorn. So for Capricorn, this full moon is happening in your ninth house which is a really cool house. In ancient astrology, it's called the house of God because it's really where we have a higher understanding of things, our worldviews, how we look at life, our philosophies, our belief systems, where we travel to places out of our comfort zone because that gives us a different perspective. That gives us a, a higher view, a higher perspective on things. And so it also deals with education, like higher education, because that gives us also a different perspective and a higher perspective and understanding and so, and it can deal with things like publishing and, and stuff like that. So like worldviews, politics, etc. So with the full moon here, you could see a lot of those themes coming up, a lot of those areas and topics coming up into your life. And it could be a time where maybe you are rearranging like your belief systems or you're tweaking some things or you're noticing that things are naturally changing on their own in terms of how you view things or how you view the world, like how you view politics or um, all of that. Or it may be even a time where you're releasing control of things that like certain ways of viewing things, like things going on in the world or things going on like on a broad scale that you don't have control over. It could be a time where you're having to release control or let go of things that you can't control, right? Like you may be a little bit too caught up where you're like overanalyzing things or you're, um, you know, kind of trying to basically get into this like perfectionism energy. And so it could be a time where you're really having to like let a lot of that go. And uh, yeah, it could also be a time where you're learning something new or some kind of full circle moment coming around from like end of August, September last year um, with learning or traveling. It could be a time where you're really wanting to travel. Ooh, look at this sun just coming all up in here, baby. But um, yeah, so it could be a time where you're also planning a trip, you know, that could be a really great use of this energy. But it's basically like you're taking your basic day-to-day -day level dreams, interest, what you want, you know, and you're thinking like broader about this. Like, okay, how can I implement this in a broader way, in a broader perspective? How can I bring this to more people? How can I, you know, show this around? Like, how can I bring this to the world, you know? So that could be it as well. But we also have Mars and Venus in your second house this weekend and next week squaring Uranus in your fifth house. So this could bring up some financial shakeups or some unconventional stuff going on with money, finances, where you're putting your resources, your priorities versus things of pleasure, things of fun, doing things that are fun, doing things that make you feel free and liberated. And so the Mars Venus conjunction in the second could be kind of bringing up some challenges there in some way, or it could be a time where you're wanting to upgrade something out of pleasure or where you're shifting your priorities in some way, or it could be like a unexpected, you know, something unexpected coming up that forces you to kind of change your priorities or shift in some way. So that could also be the case as well. But anyways, let me know down below what this ends up being for you and uh, comment hashtag Capricorn gang if you finish this horoscope all the way through. And uh, yeah, let me know how this full moon is affecting you and I will see you guys in my other videos. All right, Aquarius, let's do you guys. So this Virgo full moon is happening in your eighth house sector. So can bring up some stuff about money, okay? Where do you need to rearrange your finances? Where do you owe some shit? Where have you neglected some shit? <laughs> Where are there some financial interest affairs, you know, connections that need to be straightened out, you know? Like, where have you maybe been putting stuff off? Like, where have you maybe been spending too much or, you know, just putting some stuff off, you know, like it's time to rearrange the money, honey, you know, and so that is what this full moon could definitely be bringing up for you guys. It could also bring up if you're an Aquarius rising, 
Uh, some stuff where you feel a little bit like out of control, like some things that are out of your control that need to be addressed or that you need to surrender to, you know? It's like where you need to change your habits around money and finances. Where do you need to surrender control or, you know, around something that is out of your control? Where do you need to, you know, deal with something that maybe you've been putting off for a while? You know, this could also involve, involve for some Aquarians, your partner's money or your partner's finances. If you have a partner, you know, something could be going on with their money or their finances. So that's something else that you could see come up. Other than that, the Venus, uh, Mars, Uranus square will be happening in your sign and in your fourth house of home and family. And so basically there could be some tensions rising that kind of erupt over the next week or so, this weekend or next week, where there's something that you are really pushing for, something that you really want or something that you're trying to do, something that like you're just trying to be you or you're trying to do something that you're interested in or you're really trying to push something or move forward with something. But there could be some backlash or some shakeups that happen in terms of your family. There could be something unconventional going on, you know, or something that's like different, you know, and there could be either people in your personal life, your family or something going on in your home life or your living situation that is out of the ordinary or unexpected or really like breaks you free of something you know you could be really trying to break free of some kind of familial obligation or some kind of living arrangement or some kind of like living situation obligation you know something like that and so yeah so that could be going on over like the next week or so sorry if you hear my cat he's a little whiner he whines all the time um he doesn't meow he just whines so he's fine though i just fed him and he just won't stop whining so sorry but um anyway so that is what i'm seeing for you guys aquarius let me know down below uh if this resonated and what you see coming up in your life for this full moon energy comment down below hashtag aquarius gang if you stayed all the way through your horoscope and with that being said we are going to move on to Pisces. So for Pisces, this full moon is happening in your seventh house, so your opposite sign. So this could definitely be a time where there's more of a focus on your significant relations, your relationships, how you relate with others, how you show up in the world. You could be seeing yourself from a different angle where there could be something going on in a, a you know, significant relationship or partnership within your life where you know, they may be going through something or the focus may be a little bit more on them or you may have to kind of let go, you know, you may have to like kind of surrender or there may be some kind of culmination or ending going on outside of you with another person or a situation with you and another person. And so that could be it as well. This could be a time of really rearranging your social life in a lot of right ways and rearranging like yourself, you know, like there could be a lot that you're learning in terms of partnerships and relationships and you've been learning a lot about yourself. And so it's kind of like, how can you implement these deep dives that you've been doing within yourself and into yourself? How can you implement that and organize that in your relationships? How can you take those lessons and implement them in your relationships to make sure you don't lose yourself or to make sure that you have your boundaries or you stand your ground or you don't take on other people's issues, you know? Things like this, you know, like that you don't get too overwhelmed in terms of relationships or other people or your social life, like, and so, you know, you could be learning, you could have been learning a lot about yourself over the last few weeks since it, you know, has been Pisces season. And if you're a Pisces rising, this is all happening in your first house the last few weeks. So it could have been a lot of like really liberating yourself from old patterns and like this new you just really being born. And this full moon is kind of like, okay, what do we need to let go? What do we need to readjust in our lives, especially in our social lives or with relationships in order to move forward from here, in order to make sure that we are stable and steady within ourselves, you know, and that we are staying true to ourselves in terms of our relationships with others, you know, and that the relationships we have in our lives really reflect us and really reflect what we want. And, you know, how can you make sure that like the relationships in your lives are aligned with you and your soul, like on a soul level and not just there because, you know, you feel bad or whatever the case may be, you know, like obviously you don't want people in your life just because you know, like you're trying to be nice or whatever when really they're not like adding anything to your life, you know, or they're just kind of there and nothing's going, you know? And so 
Anyway, so those are some things that you can notice as a Pisces rising with this full moon, but also we have Mars and Venus in your 12th house squaring Uranus and Taurus in your third house. So this could definitely be a time where there's some subconscious stuff that needs to come to the surface, some subconscious stuff that needs to be talked about or voiced in some way. Um, there could also be some subconscious stuff coming up in terms of your environment, or there could be some you know, breakthroughs that happen in terms of your environment or speaking your truth or getting something off your chest or something like that. I could really see with this 12th, third house energy because the 12th house is kind of hidden and the third house is kind of your environment, but it's also like the mind and speaking and the people, places, and things that you frequent. So this could also be a time where there may be some tensions rising in terms of the people you surround yourself with in your day-to-day -day life or the things that you do in your day-to-day -day life and maybe breaking free. Like maybe there, maybe you want to get away for a little bit or you have more of an interest that involves some seclusion or isolation or doing things on your own or doing things like behind the scenes and maybe there's certain things in your day-to-day -day life that are kind of keeping you from that in some way. And so that's some of the ways that this could play out. But definitely let me know down below, Pisces, if that resonates for you. As always, I love to hear your feedback. And uh, yeah, comment Pisces gang down below if you stayed all the way through your horoscope. And we are going to move on to Aries. For Aries, this full moon is happening in your sixth house of your health, your day-to-day -day work, your day-to-day -day jobs, the tasks that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, your routines, your schedules, and your like maintenance, you know, like what do you need to like keep up with yourself and keep up with your lifestyle and to live the life you want to live? What habits need to go? You know, you've been really kind of feeling secluded over these last couple weeks and really being pushed to go inward and face things that you've been avoiding or putting off and deal with like, you know, subconscious emotional patterns or subconscious patterns that, you know, can sometimes lead to escapism or self-sabotaging or whatever. Like you've been really just being pushed to go inward and heal over these last few weeks. So this Virgo full moon is like, okay, back to reality uh, and what can you bring with you that you've learned over these last few weeks? Like how can you start implementing this healing on a day-to-day -day level so it doesn't get that crazy so you don't have to purge that much every Pisces season, you know what I mean? So you can like bring this in on a day-to-day -day level and so you have less healing to do, you know, so it's not all building up because you're not like avoiding it all, you know what I mean? Like, and so it's kind of like, okay, back to work or back to your schedules, what needs to be rearranged to be more in alignment with who you are and like feel more refreshing, you know, like what do you need to add to your day-to-day -day routine? What do you need to reorganize? What do you need to take apart and redo? What do you need to tweak in your day-to-day -day lives, your routines, your schedules, your work, your health, you know? all of those types of things. It's like really addressing like habits as well and like where habits can get you to a place that you don't want to be, you know what I mean? Like you've done a lot of healing work and now you have to reform new habits. And so I really think that's what this full moon is bringing up if you're an Aries rising. We also have Venus and Mars and Aquarius squaring Uranus and Taurus from your 11th to your second house. So this could definitely be a time where you are really wanting to break free in terms of a money situation or finances or financial obligations or a corporation or other people, friends, acquaintances, etc., or where you're feeling very driven to, you know, maybe, you know, bring in a new income that's going to liberate you in some way. And chances are this has been kind of coming up anyway, like over the last like year or two now where maybe you've been really focused on what you want to bring to the world, your place in the world, the collective, acquaintances, allies, alliances, like, you know, like-minded people, networking and all of that. And there's been some kind of challenge there with like finances, money, um, your priorities, you know, like what you have. And so there could be somewhat of like a clash here over the next week. Uh, with this square happening where it's like you've been really wanting to liberate yourself or find individuality through consistency and simplicity and like practicality and through material resources and stuff like that. But there could be something going on on a larger scale or with other people or, you know, your ambitions or whatever that are kind of like somehow challenging that a little bit in a way. So anyways, let me know down below, Aries, uh, how this is playing out for you. And if any of this resonates, as always, I'd love to know. Comment hashtag Aries gang down below and let me know. And uh, yeah, we're gonna move on to Taurus. For Taurus, we have uh, this full moon happening in your 
uh, fifth house. So this full moon is happening in your fifth house of children, love, romance, sexuality, dating, you know, where you find your joy in life, you know? And so this full moon is really like, hey, where do you need to get back to the basics in terms of finding your joy, finding what you're passionate about? Could be something as simple as like reorganizing or cleaning or, you know, like getting back to like the details or getting back into a routine that adds more joy into your life or that adds more fun or pleasure like what brings you pleasure and a lot of the times it can be like really simple things or small things that just need to be readjusted you know and with this you know with pisces season the last couple of weeks you've been focusing a lot on your ambitions and like the the bigger goals that you have the bigger vision that you have and who's included in that and the people that you relate with are like-minded people etc and so this virgo full moon is like okay Let's get back to the drawing board. Let's get back to what fuels you. Let's get back to like what feels good, you know, things like that. So that's really what this Virgo full moon could be bringing up. It could also be bringing up dating, sexuality, or children for some of you as well. But anyway, so we also have the Venus and Mars transit happening in your 10th house and it's squaring Uranus in your first house. So there could kind of be like uh, some tension arising where there is possibly something going on in your work and career where you've been really focused there, you've been putting a lot of energy there, or there's been some interest or something that you've been integrating there, but that comes into a clash with who you are as a person, your individuality, what you want, um, what makes you feel free and liberated. And so there could be kind of like this clash between feeling free and feeling liberated and feeling kind of like eccentric and different versus fitting in in terms of your career or you know what makes you different what makes you stand out in terms of your career something like that could really come up over like the next week or so where you know maybe you're feeling maybe your differences somehow con conflict with the overall mainstream like trends or whatever in terms of the field you're in or the career you're in or your coworkers or whatever and so it's like there's somewhat of a clash there that comes up that you're having to work through um, but it could also be very inspiring and give you like, you know, a lot of motivation as well. So watch out for that over the next week. But that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus. Definitely let me know down below if any of that resonates. I'd really love to hear your feedback. Uh, comment hashtag Taurus gang down below if it does relate. And uh, yeah, we are going to move on to Gemini. So for Gemini risings, this full moon is happening in your fourth house of home and family, your personal life, your childhood, your past, your roots, your foundation. So a lot of these things can come up with this full moon. You could be really reflecting on the past a lot or memories could be coming back to you. It could definitely be a time where you're feeling like, okay, it's time to organize my house. It's time to reorganize this. It's time to reorganize that. It's time to clean. It's time to like, you know, get shit done. You know, it's like literally like spring cleaning for Gemini Risings right now. It's like you've been so focused outwardly and on your public image and your career with Pisces season and like where you're going in your higher vision and what where you're headed in life and having to just trust and let go and this virgo full moon is like well uh hold on like we need to get back to the basics we mean there's like there's something within the home the foundation there's something going on in the inside in the personal life that needs to be addressed or rearranged or we need to see it from a different side or see it from a different angle or perception needs to change a little bit on something in the home life so something's being readjusted here something's being fixed here there's a solution that's coming to the surface that you know you're really addressing or readjusting in some way and so anyways so that's basically the full moon for gemini risings and then we also have the mars and venus transit through aquarius squaring uranus and taurus and this is happening in your ninth and 12th house. Now you've been dealing with a similar square from Aquarius to Taurus at least since like last year. And so this could definitely be a time where it's like bringing up familiar things, but you're, it could be a time where you're having to integrate them or find a new way to work with them or like, you know, you're, you're, you're wiser now with this, with it, with it this time. So it's kind of like your subconscious and what's going on behind the scenes and what you're putting off or old behaviors, old patterns, you know, like healing and spirituality and institutions and things like that 
versus your belief systems and travel and education and educational pursuits and where you're going in life and the bigger picture and your world views, your political views, your religious views, like all your views on like the higher perspective stuff, right? And so this could somehow be clashing where it's like maybe you're trying to break free from an old way of thinking or certain people that think a certain way or you're trying to break free from you know, like maybe you need to change your major if you're in college or going to school or maybe you're rethinking things or maybe you're, you know, rethinking what you want to do with your life and if it really aligns with you and who you are and what you want to do in terms of learning and education and travel and, you know, and, and how you want to just be like more independent or how you might have like this subconscious like need to be a little bit more independent or to be a little bit more secluded in some way. And so there could be the kind of this push and pull between those energies, but definitely let me know down below how you see it playing out, Gemini. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback as always. And uh, if you watch this full horoscope, please comment down below, hashtag Gemini gang. And yeah, we're gonna move on to Cancer. So for Cancer, this full moon is happening in your third house of your day-to-day -day activities and whereabouts, your your environment, siblings, neighbors, relatives, kind of like the uh, people, places, and things that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so this could be a time where you are implementing a lot of lessons you've been learning or a lot of like higher perspective stuff that you've been learning over the last like few weeks into your day-to-day -day reality in life, like where you're really bringing things down from a higher viewpoint and bringing them to like a, a more simplistic practical way of thinking and implementing those in your day-to-day -day life if that makes sense so like if I don't know like let's say you were learning some like really far out woo woo topic over like the last few weeks now it's like okay well how can I implement this into my daily life when I run errands or go to the store or you know, do the dishes or whatever, or run into a neighbor or run into that chick from high school that I can't stand at the grocery store. Like, you know, like shit like that, you know, like how can you implement the stuff you've been learning on like a really basic level, like back to the basics kind of thing, you know? Um, and you know, there may be some errands or there may be a lot of stuff coming up where you're kind of a little bit more busy, busier than usual. Like you may have like a lot of calls or meetings or emails or, you know, something that's going on. Um, this would be an excellent time for like writing or journaling and, you know, just really implementing some of these higher spiritual things that maybe you've been dealing with or, or learning about or going through um, into your day to day life, you know, into your everyday life. Right. And bringing them down to a more practical level where it, it really like actually adds something to your life. And so, yeah, that's what I'm seeing here, Cancer. We also have Mars and Venus in your eighth house in Aquarius, wearing Uranus and Taurus in your 11th house. So this could be some push and pull between uh, like finances, investments, money stuff, like money affairs, financial affairs, um, you know, things that are owed to you or things that you owe to other people. Uh, versus friends and acquaintances and alliances and you know people that you know or people in your in your life somehow people in your social circles or networking or your ambitions and so there could be something you're feeling very ambitious about but there could also be kind of this energy of like you know feeling financially held back or there could be some kind of financial issue or some kind of like financial affair that needs to get worked out or that you're trying to work out so you can break free and go after what you want in life, you know? Or there could be like some kind of financial thing involving other people in some way where there's some kind of tension there, or some kind of unexpected uh, thing that comes up. So just kind of watch out for those two areas of life, like other people and ambitions versus finances and things kind of out of your control and you know, things owed to you or things that you owe to other people. And just let me know down below how you see that playing out. And if this resonates, I'd really love to hear your feedback, Cancer. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Comment hashtag Cancer Gang down below if you watch this whole thing. And we're gonna move on to Leo. So for Leo Risings, this full moon is happening in your second house, in our second house, since I'm a Leo Rising too. Um, so this full moon in our second house is really like 
okay, it's time to really ground the woo. Like I was saying earlier in the vid, like this, we've been learning so much, um, especially in terms of money and finances and flowing and just getting possibly into like really esoteric taboo stuff or getting really deeply into spiritual pursuits or getting very deeply into money and finances and the power of money or how to get into a flow with money or, you know, like business, you know, all of these different types of things. And so now it's like, okay, well, how can we bring that down to earth and implement that in terms of our own money, our own finances, you know, like how can we implement that in terms of our own priorities and like starting to make these things a priority and really set the tone, you know, like really bring this stuff down. And so it's going to be a time that's like really bringing up these things, our priorities, our money, our finances, you know, what we have and what, you know, like our, our goals and the things that we want to do in terms of money and finances and how to start taking small steps and really paying attention to those small details to address these bigger picture visions that we have in terms of wealth and money and finances and investments and all of that, you know? And so that's what I really see for us with this Virgo full moon. So we also have the Mars Venus <laughs> conjunction in Aquarius and our seventh house squaring Uranus and our 10th house in Taurus. So this is gonna bring up a lot of similar themes that we've been dealing with for like the past year now between this seventh, 10th house axis of like, what we want out of life and where we're going and our goals and our career and our image and our branding and, you know, like um, our path in life and where we're headed versus our relationship or relationships, you know, significant relationships within our lives. And Mars and Venus here have been really trying to get us to integrate both the feminine and the masculine side of our relationships with everyone, within ourselves and within the relationship itself, within the relationship dynamics. It's been really showing us like, you know, what needs to be smoothed over or what needs to be changed or what we need to take action on, you know? And so there's been, or it's been happening in, you know, the people around us. If we, if you haven't seen it necessarily in yourself in terms of where you're at with significant people in your life, it could be happening in their lives where you're seeing, you're noticing, you know, differences or this integration process happening of both the masculine and feminine energies in some way, or, there's just been a lot of focus on relationships and it's not just like romantic it's also just like like friends and our social lives and and stuff like that um so it's not just like only romantic or only marriage or only like you know a partnership it can be like friends and stuff like that too but there's been a lot of like relationship dynamic lessons that we've been learning and really getting to the bottom of and really learning how to like you know, assert ourselves in a classy way and how to, you know, like how to basically get what we want and desire from our relationships and what relationships are giving us what we want and desire and which ones aren't, which ones are aligned with us and which ones aren't. And so this square to Uranus and Taurus in the 10th could bring up some kind of tension between like what we want and our vision for our path and our future and our goals and our business and our career and our professional life somehow versus our our relationships, you know, the people in our lives, you know, where is that not aligning? But for some, this could also be like, you know, how you're showing up in the world versus your reputation or versus your career um, or how you want to show up in the world versus, you know, your professional side, like something like that. That's how it could play out for some others. But yeah, it's just kind of a time of like, you know, we may want to break free from some obligations or commitments, or we may be feeling like we want to liberate ourselves or go through some kind of breakthrough um, in terms of our career and our significant relations. So I am really, really curious to see how this plays out for us. So if you start seeing this play out, it's like a very unconventional energy too, where it's like you could be, you know, joining people that are unconventional and somehow trying to do something different or unconventional in terms of your career or the career space. So I just really would love to hear your experiences over like the next week and what you notice in terms of your career or your life path, like where you're headed, your goals, your achievements, etc., versus your your social life and relationships, like and how much that changes over the next week because there's some kind of major shift coming here. So and it may be somewhat unexpected or 
surprising in some ways, but it's still like a familiar energy and for and it could also be harmonizing some of these difficulties we've had in these two areas, you know, with Venus there. So you never know, but I'd really love to know. So anyway, so that is all. That is it for this video you guys comment hashtag leo gang down below if you stayed all the way through i'd really really appreciate it or if you stayed until you're hearing this at least <laughs> um so yeah i will see you guys in my other videos thank you so so much for watching check the description below if you want more from me and yeah bye